Jane Fonda, born Jane Seymour Fonda, December 21, 1937, is an American actress, writer, political activist, former fashion model and fitness guru. She is a two-time Academy Award winner. In 2014, she was the recipient of the American Film Institute AFI Life Achievement Award. Fonda made her Broadway debut in the 1960 play There Was a Little Girl, for which she received the first of two Tony Award nominations, and made her screen debut later the same year in Tall Story. She rose to fame in 1960s films such as Period of Adjustment, 1962, Sunday in New York, 1963, Cat Ballou, 1965, Barefoot in the Park, 1967, and Barbarella, 1968. Her first husband was Barbarella director Roger Vadim, a seven-time Academy Award nominee. She received her first nomination for They Shoot Horses, Don't They, 1969, and went on to win two Best Actress Oscars in the 1970s for Clued, 1971, and Coming Home, 1978. Her other nominations were for Julia, 1977, The China Syndrome, 1979, On Golden Pond, 1981, and The Morning After, 1986. Her other major competitive awards include an Emmy Award for the 1984 TV film The Dollmaker, two BAFTA Awards for Julia and The China Syndrome and four Golden Globe Awards. In 1982, she released her first exercise video, Jane Fonda's Workout, which became the highest-selling video of the time. It would be the first of 22 workout videos released by her over the next 13 years which would collectively sell over 17 million copies. Divorced from second husband Tom Hayden, she married billionaire media mogul Ted Turner in 1991 and retired from acting. Divorced from Turner in 2001, she returned to acting with her first film in 15 years with the 2005 comedy Monster in Law. Subsequent films have included Georgia Rule, 2007, The Butler, 2013, and This Is Where I Leave You, 2014. In 2009, she returned to Broadway after a 45-year absence, in the play 33 Variations, which earned her a Tony Award nomination, while her recurring role in the HBO drama series The Newsroom, 2012-2014, has earned her two Emmy Award nominations. She also released another five exercise videos between 2010 and 2012. Fonda was a visible political activist in the counterculture era during the Vietnam War and has been more recently involved in advocacy for women. She was famously and controversially photographed sitting on an anti-aircraft battery on a 1972 visit to Hanoi. She has also protested the Iraq War and violence against women, and describes herself as a feminist. In 2005, she, Robin Morgan and Gloria Steinem co-founded the Women's Media Center, an organization that works to amplify the voices of women in the media through advocacy, media and leadership training, and the creation of original content. Fonda currently serves on the board of the organization. She published an autobiography in 2005. In 2011, she published a second memoir, Prime Time. Background. Jane Seymour Fonda was born on December 21, 1937, in New York City, the daughter of actor Henry Fonda and the Canadian-born socialite Francis Ford Brokaw, née Seymour. According to her father, their surname came from an Italian ancestor who immigrated to the Netherlands in the 1500s. There, they intermarried and began to use Dutch given names, with Jane's first Fonda ancestor reaching New York in 1650. She also has English, Scottish, and French ancestry. She was named for the third wife of Henry VIII, Jane Seymour, to whom she is distantly related on her mother's side. She has a brother, Peter, an actor, and a maternal half-sister, Francis de Villers Brokaw, a.k.a. Pan, whose daughter is Pilar Corias, owner of Pilar Corias Gallery in London. On April 14, 1950, when Fonda was 12, her mother committed suicide while under treatment at a psychiatric hospital. Later that year, Fonda's father married socialite Susan Blanchard, born 1928, just nine years his daughter's senior. This marriage ended in divorce. At 15, Fonda taught dance at Fire Island Pines, New York. She attended Greenwich Academy in Greenwich. Greenwich, Connecticut. Fonda attended the Emma Willard School in Troy, New York, and Vassar College in Poughkeepsie, where she was an undistinguished student. Before starting her acting career, Fonda was a model, gracing the cover of Vogue twice. Acting career. Fonda became interested in acting in 1954, while appearing with her father in a charity performance of The Country Girl, at the Omaha Community Playhouse. After dropping out of Vassar, she went to Paris for two years to study art. Upon returning to the States, in 1958, she met Lee Strasberg and the meeting changed the course of her life, Fonda saying, I went to the actor's studio and Lee Strasberg told me I had talent, real talent. It was the first time that anyone, except my father, who had to say so, told me I was good at anything. It was a turning point in my life. I went to bed thinking about acting. I woke up thinking about acting. It was like the roof had come off my life. 1960s. Her stage work in the late 1950s laid the foundation for her film career.
career in the 1960s, she averaged almost two movies a year throughout the decade, starting in 1960 with Tall Story, in which she recreated one of her Broadway roles as a college cheerleader pursuing a basketball star played by Anthony Perkins. Period of Adjustment and Walk on the Wild Side followed in 1962. In Walk on the Wild Side, Fonda played a prostitute and earned a Golden Globe for Most Promising Newcomer. In 1963, she appeared in Sunday in New York. Newsday called her the loveliest and most gifted of all our new young actresses. However, she also had detractors. In the same year, the Harvard Lampoon named her the year's worst actress for the Chapman Report. Fonda's career breakthrough came with Cat Ballou, 1965, in which she played a school Marm turned out law. This comedy western received five Oscar nominations and was one of the year's top ten films at the box office. It was considered by many to have been the film that brought Fonda to bankable stardom. After this came the comedies Any Wednesday, 1966, and Barefoot in the Park, 1967, the latter co-starring Robert Redford. In 1968, she played the title role in the science fiction spoof Barbarella, which established her status as a sex symbol. In contrast, the tragedy They Shoot Horses, Don't They, 1960 won her critical acclaim, and she earned her first Oscar nomination for the role. Fonda was very selective by the end of the 1960s, turning down lead roles in Rosemary's Baby and Bonnie and Clyde, which went to Mia Farrow and Faye Dunaway, respectively. 1970s. Fonda won her first Academy Award for Best Actress in 1971, again playing a prostitute, the gamine Brie Daniels, in the murder mystery Clute. She won a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress for Clute and another in 1978 for Coming Home as well as the Academy Award for Best Actress in 1978, for the story of a disabled Vietnam War veteran's difficulty in re-entering civilian life. Between Clute in 1971 and Fun with Dick and Jane in 1977, Fonda did not have a major film success. She appeared in A Doll's House, 1973, Steelyard Blues and the Blue Bird, 1976. From comments ascribed to her in interviews, some have inferred that she personally blamed the situation on anger at her outspoken political views. I can't say I was blacklisted, but I was graylisted. However, in her 2005 autobiography, My Life So Far, she rejected such simplification. The suggestion is that because of my actions against the war my career had been destroyed. But the truth is that my career, far from being destroyed after the war, flourished with a vigor it had not previously enjoyed. She reduced acting because of her political activism providing a new focus in her life. Her return to acting in a series of issue-driven films reflected this new focus. In 1972, Fonda starred as a reporter along Side Eve Montand and Tout VABN directed by Jean-Luc Godard and Jean-Pierre Gorin. The two directors then made Letter to Jane, in which the two spent nearly an hour discussing a news photograph of Fonda. Through her production company, IPC Films, she produced films that helped return her to star status. The 1977 comedy film Fun with Dick and Jane is generally considered her comeback picture. Also in 1977, she portrayed the playwright Lillian Hellman in Julia, receiving positive reviews, BAFTA and Golden Globe Awards for Best Actress, and an Oscar nomination. During during this period, Fonda announced that she would make only films that focused on important issues, and she generally stuck to her word. She turned down an unmarried woman because she felt the part was not relevant. She won another BAFTA Award for Best Actress in 1979 with The China Syndrome, about a cover-up of an accident in a nuclear power plant. The same year, she starred in The Electric Horseman with her previous co-star, Robert Redford. 1980s. In 1980, Fonda starred in 9 to 5 with Lily Tomlin and Dolly Parton. The film was a huge critical and box office success, becoming the second highest grossing release of the year. Fonda had long wanted to work with her father, hoping it would help their strained relationship. She achieved this goal when she purchased the screen rights to the play On Golden Pond, specifically for her father and her. On Golden Pond, which also starred Katherine Hepburn, brought Henry Fonda his only Academy Award for Best Actor, which Jane accepted on his behalf, as he was ill and could not leave home. He died five months later. Fonda continued appearing in feature films throughout the 1980s, winning an Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actress in 1984 for The Dollmaker, and starring in the role of Dr. Martha Livingston in Agnes of God, 1985. She was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actress for her portrayal of an alcoholic murder suspect in the 1986 thriller The Morning After, opposite Jeff Bridges. She ended the decade by appearing in Old Gringo. This was followed by the romantic drama Stanley and Iris, 1990, with Robert De Niro, which would be her final film for 15 years. Exercise videos. For many years, 
years Fonda took ballet class to keep fit, but after fracturing her foot while filming The China Syndrome, she was no longer able to participate. To compensate, she began participating in aerobics and strengthening exercises under the direction of Lenny Kasdan. The Lenny workout became the Jane Fonda workout, which began a second career for her, continuing for many years. This was considered one of the influences that started the fitness craze among baby boomers, then approaching middle age. In 1982, Fonda released her first exercise video, titled Jane Fonda's Workout, inspired by her best-selling book, Jane Fonda's Workout Book. Jane Fonda's Workout became the highest-selling home video of the next few years, selling over a million copies. The video's release led many people to buy the then-new VCR in order to watch and perform the workout at home. The exercise videos were produced and directed by Sidney Gallandy, who helped to put the deal together with video distributor Stuart Carl, of Carl Home Video. Gallanty produced the first video and 11 more after that. She would subsequently release 23 workout videos with the series selling a total of 17 million copies combined, more than any other exercise series. She released 5 workout books and 13 audio programs, through 1995. After a 15-year hiatus, she released 2 new fitness videos on DVD in 2010, aiming at an older audience. Retirement and Return In the early 1990s, after 3 decades in film, Fonda announced her retirement from the film industry. Industry. In May 2005, she returned to the screen with the box office success Monster in Law, starring opposite Jennifer Lopez. Two years later, Fonda had a supporting role in the drama Georgia Rule, alongside Felicity Huffman and Lindsay Lohan. In 2009, Fonda returned to act on Broadway for the first time since 1963 playing Catherine Brandt in Waze's Kaufman's 33 Variations. The role earned her a Tony nomination for Best Performance by a Leading Actress in a Play. Fonda filmed her second movie in French when she had a leading role in the 2011 drama Altogether. The same year she starred alongside Catherine Keener in Peace, Love and Misunderstanding playing a hippie grandmother. In 2012, Fonda began a recurring role as Leona Lansing, CEO of a major media company, in HBO's original political drama The Newsroom. Her role continued throughout the show's three seasons, and Fonda received two Emmy nominations for Outstanding Guest Actress in a Drama Series. In 2013, Fonda had a small role in The Butler, portraying First Lady Nancy Reagan. She had more film work the following year, appearing in the comedies Better Living Through Chemistry and This Is Where I Leave You. She also voiced a character Character on The Simpsons. She played an acting diva in Paolo Sorrentino's Youth in 2015. Her upcoming film roles include Fathers and Daughters with Russell Crowe. Fonda appears as a joint lead in the Netflix series Grace and Frankie. She and Lily Tomlin play aging women whose husbands reveal they are in love. Filming on the first season was completed in November 2014, and the show premiered online on May 8, 2015. Political activism. During the 1960s, Fonda engaged in political activism in support of the civil rights movement, and in opposition to the Vietnam War. Fonda's visits to France brought her into contact with leftist French intellectuals who were opposed to war, an experience that she later characterized as small c communism. Along with other celebrities, she supported the Alcatraz Island occupation by American Indians in 1969, which was intended to call attention to failures of the government in treaty rights and the movement for greater Indian sovereignty. She supported Huey Newton and the Black Panthers in the early 1970s, stating revolution is an act of love, we are the children of revolution, born to be rebels, it runs in our blood. She called the Black Panthers our revolutionary vanguard, we must support them with love, money, propaganda and risk. She has been involved in the feminist movement since the 1970s, which dovetails with her activism in support of civil rights. Opposition to Vietnam War. In April 1970, Fonda, with Fred Gardner and Donald Sutherland formed the FTA tour, Free the Army, a play on the troop expression Fuck the Army, an anti-war road show designed as an answer to Bob Hope's USO tour. The tour, described as political vaudeville by Fonda, visited military towns along the West Coast, with the goal of establishing a dialogue with soldiers about their upcoming deployments to Vietnam. The dialogue was made into a movie, FTA, which contained strong, frank criticism of the war by servicemen and servicewomen. It was released in 1972. On May 4, 1970, Fonda appeared before an assembly at the University of New Mexico, in Albuquerque, to speak on gay rights and issues. The end of her presentation was met with a discomforting silence. The quiet was broken when beat poet Gregory Corso staggered onto the stage, drunk, 
Corso challenged Fonda, using a four-letter expletive, why hadn't she addressed the shooting of four students at Kent State by the Ohio National Guard, which had just taken place. Fonda in her autobiography revisited the incident, I was shocked by the news and felt like a fool. On the same day, she joined a protest march on the home of university president, Farrell Hetty. The protesters called themselves They Shoot Students, Don't They? A reference to Fonda's recently released film, They Shoot Horses, Don't They? Which had just been screened in Albuquerque. In the same year, Fonda spoke out against the war at a rally organized by Vietnam Veterans Against the War, VVAW, in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. She offered to help raise funds for VVAW and, for her efforts, was rewarded with the title of Honorary National Coordinator. On November 3, 1970, Fonda started a tour of college campuses on which she raised funds for the organization. As noted by the New York Times, Fonda was a major patron of the VVAW. Controversial visit to Hanoi. Fonda visited Hanoi in July 1972 to witness firsthand the bombing damage to the dikes. After touring and photographing dike systems in North Vietnam, she said the United United States had been intentionally targeting the dike system along the Red River. Columnist Joseph Kraft, who was also touring North Vietnam, said he believed the damage to the dikes was incidental and was being used as propaganda by Hanoi, and that, if the U.S. Air Force were truly going after the dikes, it would do so in a methodical, not a harem scarum way. Fonda was photographed seated on a anti-aircraft battery, the controversial photo outraged a number of Americans, and earned her the nickname Hanoi Jane. In her 2005 autobiography, she wrote that she was manipulated into sitting on the battery, she had been horrified at the implications of the pictures and regretted they were taken. In a 2011 entry at her official website, Fonda explained, It happened on my last day in Hanoi. I was exhausted in an emotional wreck after the two-week visit. The translator told me that the soldiers wanted to sing me a song. He translated as they sung. It was a song about the day. Uncle Ho, declared their country's independence in Hanoi's Ba Din Square. I heard these words, All men are created equal, they are given certain rights, among these are life, liberty and happiness. These are the words Ho pronounced at the historic ceremony. I began to cry and clap. These young men should not be our enemy. They celebrate the same words Americans do. The soldiers asked me to sing for them in return. I memorized a song called De Ma Di, written by anti-war South Vietnamese students. I knew I was slaughtering it, but everyone seemed delighted that I was making the attempt. I finished. Everyone was laughing and clapping, including me. Here is my best, honest recollection of what happened. Someone, I don't remember who, led me towards the gun, and and I sat down, still laughing, still applauding. It all had nothing to do with where I was sitting. I hardly even thought about where I was sitting. The cameras flashed. It is possible that it was a setup, that the Vietnamese had it all planned. I will never know. But if they did I can't blame them. The buck stops here. If I was used, I allowed it to happen. A two-minute lapse of sanity that will haunt me forever. But the photo exists, delivering its message regardless of what I was doing or feeling. I carry this heavy in my heart. I have apologized numerous times for any pain I may have caused servicemen and their families because of this photograph. It was never my intention to cause harm. Fonda made radio broadcasts on Hanoi Radio throughout her two-week tour, commenting on her visits to villages, hospitals, schools, and factories damaged in the war and denouncing U.S. military policy in Vietnam. Fonda has defended her decision to travel to North Vietnam in her radio broadcasts. During the course of her visit, Fonda visited American prisoners of war, POWs, and brought back messages from them to their families. When stories of torture of returning POWs were later being publicized by the Nixon administration, Fonda called the returning POWs hypocrites and liars and pawns, adding about the prisoners she visited, these were not men who had been tortured, these were not men who had been starved, these were not men who had been brainwashed. In addition, Fonda told the New York Times in 1973, I'm quite sure that there were incidents of torture, but the pilots who were saying it was the policy of the Vietnamese and that it was systematic, I believe that's a lie. Her visits to the POW camp led to persistent and exaggerated rumors which were repeated widely in the press and continued to circulate on the internet decades later. Fonda, as well as the named POWs, have personally denied the rumors, and subsequent interviews with the POWs showed these rumored allegations to be false as the persons named had never met Fonda. In 1972, Fonda helped fund and organize the Indochina Peace Campaign, which continued to mobilize anti-war activists across the nation after the 1973 Paris Peace Agreement, through 1975, when the United States withdrew from Vietnam. Because of her tour of North 
North Vietnam during wartime and the subsequent rumors circulated about her visit, resentment against her among some veterans and currently serving U.S. military still exists. For example, when U.S. Naval Academy plebes, who had not yet been born when Fonda protested the Vietnam War, shouted out good night, Jane Fonda, the company replied good night, bitch. This practice has since been prohibited by the Academy's plebe summer standard operating procedures. In 2005, Michael A. Smith, a U.S. Navy veteran, was arrested for disorderly conduct in Kansas City, Missouri, after he spat chewing tobacco in Fonda's face during a book signing event for her autobiography, My Life So Far. He told reporters that he considered it a debt of honor, adding she spit in our faces for 37 years. It was absolutely worth it. There are a lot of veterans who would love to do what I did. Fonda refused to press charges. Regrets. In a 1988 interview with Barbara Walters, Fonda expressed regret for some of her comments and actions, stating, I would like to say something, not just to Vietnam veterans in New England, but to men who were in Vietnam, who I hurt, or whose pain I caused to deepen because of things that I said or did. I was trying to help end the killing and the war, but there were times when I was thoughtless and careless about it and I'm very sorry that I hurt them, and I want to apologize to them and their families. I will go to my grave regretting the photograph of me in an anti-aircraft gun, which looks like I was trying to shoot at American planes. It hurt so many soldiers. It galvanized such hostility. It was the most horrible thing I could possibly have done. It was just thoughtless. Some critics responded that her apology came at a time when a group of New England veterans had launched a campaign to disrupt a film project she was working on, leading to the charge that her apology was motivated at least partly by self-interest. In a 60 Minutes interview on March 31, 2005, Fonda reiterated that she had no regrets about her trip to North Vietnam in 1972, with the exception of the anti-aircraft gun photo. She stated that the incident was a betrayal of American forces and of the country that gave me privilege. Fonda said, the image of Jane Fonda, Barbarella, Henry Fonda's daughter, sitting on an enemy aircraft gun was a betrayal, the largest lapse of judgment that I can even imagine. She later distinguished between regret over the use of her image as propaganda and pride for her anti-war activism. There are hundreds of American delegations that had met with the POWs. Both sides were using the POWs for propaganda. It's not something that I will apologize for. Fonda said she had no regrets about the broadcasts she made on Radio Hanoi, something she asked the North Vietnamese to do, our government was lying to us and men were dying because of it, and I felt I had to do anything that I could to expose the lies and help end the war. Subject of government surveillance. In 2013, it was revealed that Fonda was one of approximately 1,600 Americans whose communications between 1967 and 1973 were monitored by the United States National Security Agency, NSA, as part of Project Minaret, a program that some NSA officials have described as disreputable if not downright illegal. Fonda's communications, as well as those of her husband, Tom Hayden, were intercepted by Britain's government communications headquarters, GCHQ. Under the UK-USA agreement, the GCHQ sent the intercepted data on Americans to the US government. Feminist causes. Fonda has been a longtime supporter of feminist causes, including V-Day, a movement to stop violence against women, inspired by the off-Broadway hit The Vagina Monologues, of which she is an honorary chairperson. She was present at their first summit in 2002, bringing together founder Eve Ensler, Afghan women oppressed by the Taliban, and a Kenyan activist campaigning to save girls from genital mutilation. In 2001, she established the Jane Fonda Center for Adolescent Reproductive Health at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia to help prevent adolescent pregnancy through training and program development. On February 16, 2004, Fonda led a march through Ciudad Juarez, with Sally Field, Eve Ensler and other women, urging Mexico to provide sufficient resources to newly appointed officials helping investigate the murders of hundreds of women in the rough border city. That same year, she served as a mentor to the first ever all-transsexual cast of the Vagina Monologues. In the days before the September 17, 2006 Swedish elections, Fonda went to Sweden to support the new political party Feministiskt Initiative in their election campaign. In my life so far, Fonda stated that she considers patriarchy to be harmful to men as well as women. She also states that for many years, she feared to call herself a feminist, because she believed that all feminists were anti-male. But now, with her increased understanding of patriarchy, she feels that feminism is beneficial to both men and women, and states that she still loves men, adding that when she divorced Ted Turner, she felt like she had also divorced the world of patriarchy, and was very happy to have done so. Native Americans Fonda went to Seattle, Washington, in 1970 to support a group of Native Americans who were led by Bernie White Bear. The group had occupied part of the grounds of Fort Lawton, which was in the process of being surplused by the United States Army and turned into a park. The group was 
attempting to secure a land base where they could establish services for the sizable local urban Indian population, protesting that Indians had a right to part of the land that was originally all theirs. The endeavor succeeded and the Daybreak Star Cultural Center was constructed in the city's Discovery Park, Israeli-Palestinian conflict. In December 2002, Fonda visited Israel and the West Bank as part of a tour focusing on stopping violence against women. She demonstrated with women in black against Israel's occupation of the West Bank and Gaza Strip outside the residence of Israel's Prime Minister. She later visited Jewish and Arab doctors and patients at a Jerusalem hospital, followed by visits to Ramallah to see a physical rehabilitation center, and a Palestinian refugee camp. She was heckled by three members of Women in Green as she arrived for a meeting with leading Israeli feminists. In September 2009, she was one of more than 1,500 signatories to a letter protesting the 2009 Toronto International Film Festival's Spotlight on Tel Aviv. The protest letter said that the Spotlight on Tel Aviv was part of the Israeli propaganda machine because it was supported in part by funding from the Israeli government and had been been described by the Israeli Consul General Amir Jissing as being part of a brand Israel campaign intended to draw attention away from Israel's conflict with the Palestinians. Other signers included actor Danny Glover, musician David Byrne, journalist John Pilger, and authors Alice Walker, Naomi Klein, and Howard Zinn. Rabbi Marvin Heyer of the Simon Wiesenthal Center stated that people who support letters like this are people who do not support a two-state solution. By calling into question the legitimacy of Tel Aviv, they are supporting a one-state solution, which means the destruction of the state of Israel. Heyer continued, saying that it is clear that the script protesters are reading from might as well have been written by Hamas. Fonda, in the Huffington Post, said she regretted some of the language used in the original protest letter and how it was perhaps too easily misunderstood. It certainly has been wildly distorted. Contrary to the lies that have been circulated, the protest letter was not demonizing Israeli films and filmmakers. She continued, writing the greatest rebranding of Israel would be to celebrate that country's long-standing courageous and robust peace movement by helping to end the blockade of Gaza through negotiations with all parties to the conflict, and by stopping the expansion of West Bank settlements. That's the way to show Israel's commitment to peace, not a PR campaign. There will be no two-state solution unless this happens. Fonda emphasized that she, in no way, supports the destruction of Israel. I am for the two-state solution. I have been to Israel many times and love the country and its people. Several prominent Atlanta Jews subsequently signed a letter to the Huffington Post rejecting the vilification of Fonda, who they described as a strong supporter and friend of Israel. Opposition to the Iraq War Fonda argued that the military campaign in Iraq will turn people all over the world against America, and asserted that a global hatred of America would result in more terrorist attacks in the aftermath of the war. In July 2005, Fonda announced plans to make an anti-war bus tour in March 2006 with her daughter and several families of military veterans, saying that some of the war veterans she had met while on her book tour had urged her to speak out against the Iraq War. She later canceled the tour, because of concerns that she would distract attention from Cindy Sheehan's activism. In September 2005, Fonda was scheduled to join British politician and anti-war activist George Galloway at two stops on his U.S. book tour, Madison, Wisconsin and Chicago. She canceled her appearances at the last minute, citing instructions from her doctors to avoid travel following recent hip surgery. On January 27, 2007, Fonda participated in an anti-war rally and march held on the National National Mall in Washington, D.C., declaring that silence is no longer an option. Fonda spoke at an anti-war rally earlier in the day at the Navy Memorial, where members of the organization Free Republic picketed in a counter-protest. Fonda and Kerry In the 2004 presidential election, her name was used as a disparaging epithet against John Kerry, the former VVAW leader, who was then the Democratic Party presidential candidate. Republican National Committee Chairman Ed Gillespie called Kerry a Jane Fonda Democrat. Also, Kerry's opponents circulated a photograph showing Fonda and Kerry in the same large crowd at a 1970 anti-war rally, although they were sitting several rows apart. A faked composite photograph, which gave the false impression that the two had shared a speaker's platform, was also circulated. Environmentalism In 2015, Fonda expressed disapproval with President Barack Obama's permitting of Arctic drilling, petroleum exploration in the Arctic, at the Sundance Film Festival. In July, she marched in a Toronto protest called the March for Jobs, Justice, and Climate, which was organized by dozens of non-profits, labor unions, and environmental activists, including Canadian author Naomi Klein. The march aimed to show businesses and politicians alike that climate change is inherently linked to issues that may seem unrelated. Writing, on April 5, 2005, Random House released Fonda's autobiography My Life So Far. The book describes her life 
as a series of three acts, each 30 years long, and declares that her third act will be her most significant, partly because of her commitment to the Christian religion, and that it will determine the things for which she will be remembered. Fonda's autobiography was well received by book critics, and was noted to be as beguiling and as maddening as Jane Fonda herself in its Washington Post review, pronouncing her a beautiful bundle of contradictions. The New York Times called the book achingly poignant. In January 2009, Fonda started chronicling her Broadway return in a blog, with posts about topics ranging from her Pilates class to her fears and excitement about her new play. She uses Twitter and has a Facebook page. In 2011, Fonda published a new book, Prime Time, Love, Health, Sex, Fitness, Friendship, Spirit, Making the Most of All of Your Life. The book offers stories from her own life as well as from the lives of others, giving her perspective on how to better live what she calls the critical years from 45 and 50, and especially from 60 and beyond. Charitable work. According to IRS filings, Fonda founded the Jane Fonda Foundation in 2004 as a charitable corporation with herself as president, chair, director and secretary. Fonda contributes 10 hours each week on its behalf personal life. Fonda married her first husband, French film director Roger Vadim, on August 14, 1965, at the Dunes Hotel in Las Vegas. The couple had a daughter, Vanessa, born on September 28, 1968 in Paris, France and named for actress and activist Vanessa Redgrave. On January 19, 1973, three days after obtaining a divorce from Vadim in Santo Domingo, Fonda married activist Tom Hayden in a free-form ceremony at her home in Laurel Canyon. Their son, Troy O'Donovan Garrity, was born on July 7, 1973 in Los Angeles and was given his paternal grandmother's maiden name, as the names Fonda and Hayden carried too much baggage. Fonda and Hayden wanted to give their son a name that was both American and Vietnamese and chose Troy, an Anglicization of the Vietnamese Troy, as the only name they could think of meeting that requirement. Hayden chose O'Donovan as the middle name after Irish revolutionary Jeremiah O'Donovan Rosa. In 1982, Fonda and Hayden unofficially adopted an African-American teenager, Mary Luana Williams, known as Lulu, who was the daughter of members of the Black Panthers. Fonda and Hayden were divorced on June 10, 1990 in Santa Monica. She married her third husband, cable television tycoon and CNN founder Ted Turner, on December 21, 1991 at a ranch near Caps, Florida. The pair divorced on May 22, 2001 in Atlanta, Georgia. Since 2009, Fonda has been in a relationship with record producer Richard Perry. Fonda grew up an atheist, but turned to Christianity in the early 2000s. She describes her her beliefs as being outside of established religion, with a more feminist slant, and views God as something that lives within each of us as spirit or soul. She practices zazen meditation and yoga. Having been diagnosed with breast cancer, Fonda underwent a lumpectomy in November 2010, and has recovered. Honors. In 1981, she was awarded the Women in Film Crystal Award. In 1994, the United Nations Population Fund made Fonda a goodwill ambassador. In 2004, she was awarded the Women's E News 21 Leaders for the 21st First Century Award as one of seven who changed their worlds. In 2007, Fonda was awarded an honorary Palme d'Or by Cannes Film Festival President Gillis Jacob for career achievement. Only three others had received such an award, Jean Moreau, Alain Resnay, and Gerard Ory. In December 2008, Fonda was inducted into the California Hall of Fame, located at the California Museum for History, Women and the Arts. In December 2009, Fonda received the New York Women's Agenda Lifetime Achievement Award. She was selected as the 42nd recipient, 2014, of the AFI Life Achievement Award, Filmography.